Oh gosh, look at the crowd. Come this way. Those who spread goodness radiate happiness to everyone around them. Introducing LOLC Finance Credit Cards. Fuel the goodness in you. Welcome to Hindi TV. I'm Ashni Vedakan. Joining us on Talking Business this week is the general manager of Cinnamon Grand Colombo and Cinnamon Lakeside Colombo, Kamal Mudasinga. Welcome to the show, Kamal. It's good to have you with us. Hi. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me for the show. Kamal, in your opinion, how has the industry weathered this period? I think the tourism industry is one industry that really reacts very quickly for uh, global situations. Um, over the years, we have seen even with the smallest uh, crisis. uh that is one of the industries that get affected uh very quickly um with pandemic uh, being announced in 2021 or 2020 rather um uh, we saw the cancellations coming in and uh, people are delaying their travel plans uh, started already in january 2020 and going forward uh with the travel restrictions uh, put in place uh, in different countries uh, we saw the whole industry came to a Uh, stand still uh, and then for sri lanka if you look at it uh, the impact in started actually in 2019 with the easter bombing so we been actually having a two years of continuous uh, problems with tourist arrivals and then with pandemic uh, into 2020 uh, we see uh, uh, huge issues uh, facing our industry at the moment in sri lanka mm-hmm. um east bombing was only actually uh, a problem of sri lanka because it was only impacting sri lanka uh, we still had the business arrivals we were still getting certain arrivals our airports were never shut down uh, but with covid situation uh, that's completely different uh, the industry has been impacted very negatively and about 3 million people's uh, livelihood has been really affected uh, with this Uh, situation at the moment what initiatives have to be brought in um if you look at uh what we came across at the very beginning of the pandemic i think the sri lankan tourism uh, development uh, authority uh, came up with a protocol and a set of guidelines for hotels to operate uh, together with the sri lankan tourism uh, ministry and what we did was we had to implement all those uh, protocols in all our hotels and uh, kpmg conducted uh, an audit and issued certain certification for hotels to operate during uh, the pandemic um, then hotels got geared up as well because hotels are usually geared up with a uh, very high standard of uh, health and safety standards um then operating in such times with advanced advanced uh, uh, protocol uh, or health and safety protocol is actually not an a difficult thing for hotels uh, because we are in any case following a lot of the health and safety guidelines uh, in our day to day operation um apart from that the hotels also uh, came up with especially for cinnamon hotels and resorts uh, the two city hotels that i am managing cinnamon grand and cinnamon lake as well um took uh, further steps uh, to have uh, uh, covid response teams uh, in the hotel uh, guided by a hygiene health and hygiene uh, manager uh, where we conduct regular uh, checks on our team members and also on the implemented uh, protocols to ensure that we keep following up all those protocols uh, so that we can we cannot we can never guarantee but we can actually mitigate the risk of spreading the virus in in our uh, organizations let's talk about cinnamon grand itself pre covid your locations were a hive of activity you had guests coming in from everywhere you had staff running around making sure everything was okay and after the crisis and until recently when you decided to open and allow people back in how did you keep the staffs motivation up how did you keep staff morale going yeah it's a very good uh, question actually as a, uh, industry in general we are fa- facing this problem uh, first of all we had to shut down our operation totally for 3 months at the beginning of the year to be exact from march until about uh, june uh, we came back into operation after the first wave uh, in july everything was impacted in terms of uh, um 
business as well as the service charge for our, our team members, um, that has a huge impact on our team members. Um, however, uh, the teams at Cinnamon Grand or Cinnamon Lake were always ready to welcome our guests. So the moment we opened our doors to guests, um, I must say that the local patronage uh, has been very positive. Um, our teams were ready to welcome them, like I said, and we saw the enthusiasm of the team members as soon as we opened the doors, uh, people coming into our outlets and restaurants and certain uh, room guests were also starting to come in. So that was a positive sign. Um, what is very important during this time is keeping our team members informed of what is going around and what is the financial situation of the company and be very transparent about it. Um, I think that has helped us a lot uh, in terms of keeping them informed, uh, having regular meetings and letting them know what we are doing in order to kind of mitigate the risk because actually in our industry we are exposed to quite a lot of people on a daily basis and our team members are exposed to hundreds of people on a daily basis and it is very important that they know uh, what we are doing in order to mitigate their risks because they are going back to their families. We have guests, we have responsibilities to make sure that guests who are walking through those, those doors are also well taken care of and at the same time uh, they don't have the risk of getting infected in our properties. So um, all in all I think uh, the team has responded very very well. Motivation levels if you look at our team members for our hotels that we manage I think they are at very best levels. Can we improve that? Yes, definitely. What about the health and safety requirements that have been brought in? Are they manageable considering the nation's push to get this industry up and running again? You know, we are in the business of providing services and making guests happy. Uh, when you have restrictions for guests to enjoy and, and make use of the facilities we have, of course it's you're being challenged. And it's an additional challenge that you have to deal with the guests because guests usually come spend money and they want to be sure that they are able to get the maximum out of their stay or their visit. Um, having said that, we, we know, all of us know that we are operating through a, a pandemic. Um, I think the regulations are there and that is good uh, us to be guided. Uh, what is most important is that we evaluate the situation time and time over and over again, which is what the SLTDA, Sri Lankan Tourism Development Authority, is doing with the Health, in the health Ministry and uh, the Tourism Ministry together and taking certain steps in order to kind of ease up on those regulations based on the current situation. Um, we can see uh, that there have been very strict um, protocols in place. Uh, now we can see that they are slowly taking off certain restrictions. Um, and which is helping the, the, the industry to move forward, I think. Has there been a lull in capital expenditure projects? For example, refurbishments. And every business, if you don't make money, you can't spend money, right? Yes. That's the, the, the rule of thumb or the usual rule. Um, again, we have, for example, if I look at Cinnamon Grand and Cinnamon Lake side, we have uh, huge real estate to maintain and uh, maintaining the real estate is one of our top priorities even during uh, tough times like these. Um, usually what happens is uh, hotels or organizations take a portion of their revenue every year um, and then that goes into a separate total capex and, uh, expenditure account uh, which has not been the case for the last two years because we have not having not having, we have not been having good revenues over the last two years, or rather very little revenue. Um, but as a responsible company, um, we have taken conscious decisions to identify the areas where capital expenditure is needed, and we have taken steps um, to allocate funds in order to uh, upgrade those areas um, in both our hotels. Uh, the recent uh, uh, example would be opening of a place restaurant at uh, Cinnamon Grand. Uh, we opened place in 18th of uh, January, uh, right after the second wave, so to say. Um, and that is one area that we upgraded fully in order to be able to cater to the new requirements of the food and beverage department. And likewise, uh, we have identified certain other areas and we will be doing upgrades for those areas so that we can be ready to 
welcome our guests when they are ready to come. And on that note, we'll be going in for a short break. Welcome back to the show as we continue our conversation with the general manager of Cinnamon Grand Colombo and Cinnamon Lakeside Colombo, Kamal Munasinga. Kamal, in your opinion, what market should we be tapping into for business travelers? For Sri Lanka, it's mainly India and China. Um, whether the business travel is going to come first or the leisure travel is going to come first is questionable. But uh, what I feel, it will be the leisure travel that's going to come in first to play. Uh, people have been stuck behind closed doors or in their own homes or rather in their countries maybe. Uh, there is a need for travel. Uh, even if you talk to uh, the friends uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, that is the, the, the usual sentiment that they are waiting to get out. Um, so the leisure travel will definitely start moving first I think. Uh, there again we have to be mindful that uh, over a year or a year and a half uh, period of uh, 18 months, uh, the income levels of each and every individual has dropped. Mm -hmm. So it will be the people who would be able to spend that kind of money to travel who would be traveling first. So our target should be actually looking at the high spenders at the moment because they are the ones who would be able to travel first I think. Business on the other hand, I think they have uh, gone with the new technologies uh, over the one and a half years. There has been a lot of developments in, in technology uh, which the businesses has been using and they will continue to use that I think unless it is really required for them to travel to a destination. But my travel may start as well as um, as early as maybe end of this year. Uh, this is the sentiment that we get. We are getting certain inquiries from, from certain organizations uh, so we should start to see movements in that area. So other than, if you look at other than India and China, our main markets would be of course Great Britain, um, Central Europe, US and of course Australia will be a good market for us as well going forward. What are your views on the vaccine passport? Would this be a reality going forward? I think it's happening already, right? Because uh, the, 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 the news that is coming out uh, from the authorities, even the the circular that came out, it talks about having, not talking about having a vaccine passport, but at least having a valid document that you've been, you've been vaccinated fully. So the, the latest uh, report is that if you've been fully vaccinated and arriving in Sri Lanka as a Sri Lankan or as a top foreigner, um, you will have one day at the hotel, at a hotel, uh, where you get tested for COVID and then if your results are negative, uh, you have another seven days to stay and then after seven days you are actually allowed to go out. So this is a very positive move I think and with, uh, for, for that to continue, whether it is going to be a vaccine, a uh, COVID uh, passport or whether it is a certified uh, piece of paper, um, that has to be in place that is traceable. Let's be frank, can tourism providers actually enforce these regulations on the guests they hope to bring in? Um, I think this question is valid for if you go back about two to two and a half months uh, when we first started in December, started to accept uh, groups coming into Sri Lanka. Um, yes, we had a lot of regulations. Uh, the guests were not allowed to move from hotel to hotel. The 14 days was required to be in one hotel and they could travel within a bubble. Uh, there were a lot of restrictions. But with all those restrictions, uh, we saw a positive move and that was a positive move towards opening the country in the region as one of the first countries ex other than Maldives. I think we are, heard, we are ahead of the game at the moment. So which is a very uh, valuable move that we took. And then going forward in January we decided to open the airports um, which also helped us to identify the gaps and take necessary action in order to fulfill, the, fulfill those gaps which is very important for us because now with the vaccination rolling out uh, we see uh, positive vibes, we hear positive things about international travel resuming again and for that moment we are ready. We have done our tests, we have done our trials, we have identified our gaps and I think we have that advantage in the region 
as a tourist destination to open and welcome guests earlier than anyone else. What new avenues of revenue could be looked into for hotel operators moving forward? New revenue generating avenues for hotels is actually, um, if you look at the hotel operation, right, um, our main business, the core business is rooms and then food and beverage revenue. If you don't have those three uh, avenues of revenue, uh, the hotels cannot sustain. We can look into laundry business, we can look into delivery businesses, catering, so forth and so on, uh, but that will not be enough to sustain our business going forward or in the long term. Uh, it will help us with our cash flow, but it won't be the main driver for hotels. When you look at hotels, I think, uh, yes, of course, we should look at uh, new streams of revenues um, to help us with the cash flow. But more than that, at this moment, I think our hotels should be looking at uh, at least the Cinnamon Hotels and Resorts and two city hotels in, uh, in, in Colombo, Cinnamon Grand and Cinnamon Lake. We are looking at actually enhancing our product and services so that we are ready uh, to demand a premium uh, when the time is right, when the guests start to come and visit uh, our country. I think that should be our focus going forward uh, uh, as, a, as an industry because this is where we can uh, really make the difference in the region. If you look at it, uh, we are one of the, the best de destinations uh, for, for tourism. If you compare with all the other destinations, uh, we have everything that every other destination has, even more. Um, so, uh, if you have the right product and if you have the right service and, and if you can deliver an authentic experience to our travellers, I think that is where uh, our opportunity lies to make more revenues. Kamal, realistically speaking, how long would it take to get the industry back to pre-COVID performance? Um, I think if you look at the current situation and the industry experts uh, views on this. Um, we are looking at 2023, mid end year 2023. Um, but we will start seeing some traction uh, as short as within the next uh, two months, I think, uh, with these new regulations put in place uh, for arrivals in Sri Lanka. And then going forward towards October or towards end of this year, we should see more arrivals taking place uh, for Sri Lanka. Um, but to get back into the same levels of uh, where we were pre-COVID, um, I think it will be at least uh, mid-2023. Well, that's all the time we have for this segment. Thank you for joining us this evening, Kamal. Thank you, Ashwini, for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. And uh, have a wonderful day and uh, hope uh, my insights uh, will help the industry as well as uh, everyone who listens to this program. Thank you very much. Coming up, we have the latest from the LMD Nielsen Business Confidence Index. Stay tuned. You love the feeling of being renewed. To stay beautiful every single day. To breathe just like we do. Because you are truly delicate. Protecting the ones who've been with us through the years. With Sailac Care, the only wood coating that truly protects you. Sailac Wood Coatings from Jat. Welcome back to the show. I'm Ashwini Vedakan. Sri Lanka received its first shipment of 264,000 vaccines of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine in early March as part of an interim allocation of 1.44 million doses, which is expected to be received from the COVAX facility in stages until May. At the time, this brought the number of doses available to around 1.3 million, with nearly a million people receiving their first jab. As economic activity continues to recover against this backdrop, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka says that the economy is expected to make a notable recovery this year, supported by policy stimulus and improving business sentiment. It states positive sentiments fueled by the COVID-19 vaccination drive in the country and the impact of growth-promoting policies are expected to support the economic revival 
over the short to medium term. The outcome of the latest LMD Nielsen Business Confidence Index survey, which was carried out in the first week of March, also points to a cautiously growing sense of optimism in the business community as the country looks to return to a semblance of normalcy. The BCI registered a six-point increase to 126 in March, following a decline in February. This marks the highest point for the barometer of business confidence over the last 12 months and places the index a substantial 20 basis points above the average for this period and coincidentally, the index is now at its all-time average mark too. Nielsen's Director of Consumer Insights, Tarika Mianadenia, observes businesses are slowly opening up with some resorting to a hybrid model of working from home and office and life in general is also picking up. New cases of COVID-19 as well as the death rate are also coming down and with the vaccination drive underway, hope is rising once again among the people and businesses, she adds. Mira Tenye continues, there is also hope that this year people will be able to celebrate Aurudu and Vesak to some degree after two years of subdued activity or no festivities at all. As the vaccination drive continues and the country prepares for the festive season, business confidence seems to be on a rebound. In the March edition, we noticed that the pace and effectiveness of Sri Lanka's immunization program and spread of the virus are likely to drive sentiment in the near term. This may hold true if new COVID-19 cases continue to trend downward and Sri Lanka secures more doses of the vaccine as it looks to reach herd immunity. Where the national economy is concerned, nearly half of the respondents to the latest LMD Nielsen Business Confidence Index survey say conditions will improve over the next 12 months compared to the 28% that said so in February. Meanwhile, 39% of corporate executives expect the economy to stay the same during this period, while 12% believe conditions will deteriorate. A majority of respondents expect both long- and short-term business prospects to improve according to the latest BCI survey. Of those consulted by Nielsen, 72% down from 76% in the previous month expect sales volumes to improve over the next year. In contrast, 12% of those surveyed anticipate a decline in sales during this time an increase from 8% in February. As for the short term, nearly half, up from 37% in the preceding month of executives say sales volumes will improve over the next three months. In addition, 70% of survey participants reveal that their business has deteriorated this year compared to the last. Sentiment surrounding the investment climate has deteriorated slightly with 15% of the survey sample describing conditions as being favourable, recording a decline from 19% in February. However, 56% of respondents say that this isn't a good time to invest while 29% view conditions as fair. In terms of employment, the share of corporates planning to increase their staff numbers over the next six months remains largely the same as the previous month at 13%. On the other hand, the majority, 82% from 76% in February, of businesses expect to maintain their workforce, while another 5% say they will be retrenching staff in the coming six months. And that's all we have for you this week. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay safe.